A Modern Love Letter. I am such a voracious reader that my mother has remarked, Isabella Sanchez, you'd read anything, including the dictionary. Of course, I've perused the occasional dictionary, but I much prefer the gripping suspense of mystery novels. And though I don't like to gloat, I must admit that I usually solve the mystery before the fictional detective synthesizes the clues into a plausible theory. Strolling home from the library with yet another satchel full of paperbacks, I lament that nothing in my life exhilarates me as much as unraveling intricate mysteries. When ominous clouds obscure the sun and lightning electrifies the atmosphere, I imagine my favorite literary detective rubbing her hands together, anticipating her latest case and saying, oh, what a dark and eerie afternoon. Then I remember that here in Hyala, Florida, tropical thunderstorms occur daily and mysteries are as rare as a dry day. As it begins to sprinkle, I sprint the last few blocks home. I reach the front porch just in time to avoid the deluge and gasping for breath, inhale the mouth-watering aroma of ropa vieja wafting through the open windows. Abuela Maria is cooking my favorite meal from her native Cuba, a savory concoction of stewed beef and vegetables. When I open the screen door, a small cream-colored envelope tumbles to the ground. I bend to retrieve it, surprised to see my Bella scrawled ornately across the front. Lots of people call me Bella, but my Bella? Donning my detective's cap, I consider that this might be a prank and scan my surroundings surreptitiously, surreptitiously but spy no onlookers. Still, I step inside before carefully opening the envelope, revealing a single sheet of thick, old-fashioned stationery, the kind I've only seen in my abuela's antique desk. There on the creamy page, written in the same script, is the message, I finally found you. I have no clue what the letter means or who might have written it. No one hand writes letters anymore, except for my abuela. Even my mom texts or emails her friends, so who could have composed this? Going to the trouble of writing a letter, in cursive no less, and hand delivering it? Perhaps Graciela, my best friend, is having fun at my expense. But I doubt it. She's rather humorless. I flush as I realize that someone may actually admire me from afar, and my mind immediately conjures an image of shy, bookish Mateo, who works at the library, where I see him frequently. Just recently, he smiled at me, and I ponder whether he's working up the courage to talk to me, penning a letter as a more comfortable, more romantic means of expressing his feelings. I need additional clues to solve this mystery, so I conceal the note in my bag until I can study it secretly. The following day, I hasten to the library with a singular objective, to collect a sample of Mateo's handwriting. But when Mateo catches me shadowing him, we stare at each other, embarrassment coloring our cheeks, stammering and blushing, I rush home, only to discover my next clue. I step inside to open the envelope and am again overwhelmed by the message on the page, which praises my lovely brown eyes and glorious long hair. While I do have long hair, no one has ever described it as glorious before. Just then, my mother surprises me by coming home early from work. What's that, Bella? She inquires, inclining her head towards the note. Although I try stashing it in my bag, she deftly snatches it from my hands and reads the message. Frowning, she says, I didn't know you had a boyfriend, Bella. Me neither, I admit, before adding. We'd better tell Abuela, too. She loves drama. After I tell my tale, my mom says, you do have lovely eyes, Bella, but I'm calling the police because mystery stalkers are not welcome here. Don't be too hasty, dear, Abuela interrupts. I never told you about Alejandro, did I? I listen intently as Abuela recounts the story of her first love letter ever received in her homeland of Cuba, a declaration of love from Alejandro, the sweetest, cutest boy she'd known. I couldn't believe my luck when he wrote to me of all the girls in our neighborhood, she recalls with a melancholy smile. Before she could muster the courage to reply, however, her family abruptly fled Cuba. Those were difficult and dangerous times. We abandoned everything and started over. I was never able to say goodbye or let him know I cared for him too. With glistening eyes, she encourages mom to give young love a chance to flourish, and I'm speechless when my mom reluctantly consents. But you will alert me the minute you receive another note, she insists. The next morning, 
Eager to provide my secret admirer an opportunity to deliver another letter, I venture out on an errand for Abuela. Upon returning, I find the latest message. My dearest Bella, meet me at the park on 65th Street at 4 o'clock. Desperate to meet this unknown scribe, I beg my mom for permission to go. She finally relents on the condition that Abuela accompany me. We arrive early, hoping to spot Mateo, but encounter only an older gentleman dressed in a seersucker suit, bearing a bouquet of flowers. I look past him, but Abuela gasps and exclaims, Alejandro, after all these years. Then she turns to me and says softly, I had forgotten he called me Bella. Beautiful. I'm so sorry, Bella. Are you very disappointed? Only in my detecting skills, I answer with a rueful smile before adding, I'm glad he found you, Abuela. As Abuela reunites with a man she hasn't seen since childhood, I turn away to afford them privacy. My phone vibrates and I expect my mom wants an update, but I see an unfamiliar number on the screen. My spirit soars as I read the message. Hi, it's Mateo. Coming back to the library tomorrow, by any chance?